Welcome to the Carnivore Cast, a podcast focused on the carnivore diet and lifestyle, with practical advice from successful carnivores, citizen scientists, and top researchers. I'm your host, Scott Meslinski, and I'm here to speak with experts and experienced carnivores to get answers to your biggest and meatiest questions while helping you live your best life as a carnivore. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting the Carnivore Cast on Patreon. By becoming a patron, you'll help us reach more people and continue to create content on Carnivore. There are also exclusive perks available, such as private Q&As, consultations with me, and more. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash carnivorecast. Check the episode description for the link. Thank you, and I'll see you there. Kristen Barishian at keto.marathoner on Instagram is an accomplished carnivore, formerly keto marathoner, and self-proclaimed former veggie-holic. Kristen suffered from anemia following a low-fat diet and went from keto to carnivore, all while performing at the top levels of her sport physically and thriving in a demanding accounting career. I had the chance to meet Kristen recently for coffee, um, and she's one of the most genuine, smart, and helpful people I have met in this space. Um, And I'm super excited to have you on today, Kristen. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. And thank you for the nice introduction. <laughs> of course, of course, all all well deserved. So tell us about anemia and even your diet before then. Yeah, so growing up, you know, I suffered from body dysmorphia and a severe eating disorder. So, I mean, I can take you back through my very young days or do you just want to dive into the anemia? Uh, sh- um, sure, we can start there and, and okay. just briefly go through that and then keep yeah. going. Yeah, so, you know, as far as I, back as I, I can remember, I always, you know, kind of hated my body. Um, I'm one of three girls in my family. I'm a twin. I have a twin sister and an older sister, Becca. And I kind of hated the, that. I felt like I was always the biggest of the three of us. Um, you know, I'm your typical type A personality. You can tell because I'm an accountant. Um, you know, so I was kind of very hard on myself. So in high school, yeah, I had anorexia. So I kind of had a revolving door experience with the hospitals. Like I think I was hospitalized about three times from sophomore year to senior year, you know, mainly due to a low heartbeat for not because I was eating my, uh, myself. So in college, you know, I had to get weighed weekly by the nurse. So one day my, my weight was low and my vitals were off. So the nurse called my mom and just said, I need to leave school. So I remember just like begging them to let me stay. So that was kind of the wake up call that I needed to say, you know, my mom basically told me, you know, if you get kicked out of school, um, you know, I was going to go back. So, and that's when I really made the decision that I wanted to get better because I didn't want this affecting my life more than it already had. So, you know, and then as part of that, I started running marathons, which, you know, made me realize I needed to fuel my body properly. So that was actually the best thing for me, which, you know, kind of seems counterintuitive, for, like for someone who has need to sort of start running marathons, but it really changed my life and made me so much more confident. So, you know, running is a huge part of my life because it really helped me overcome that, the struggles that I had. So, um, you know, as far as since then, which, you know, it's been about 15 years since I've been in college and, you know, I run two marathons per year. So usually it's the Boston marathon and then a fall marathon. So we kind of joke around that I have a love hate relationship with running. So I do put pressure on myself to do well, but and I get like all stressed out before the race. But then once I cross the finish line, I'm like, all right, time to sign up for another one. <laughs> so, yeah. So as a marathoner, like the past 15 years or so, I, I follow the typical like low fat diet, you know, lots of carbs, spaghetti, you know, that, but that's the thing that they preach in the running community. Um, so for as far as protein, um, I would eat, you know, chicken, turkey, egg whites, non-fat, no sugar, Greek yogurt. For carbs, I would eat your rice cakes, your low calorie bread, your rice puff cereal. Really, uh, like no fat, no red meat, no sugar, you know, except the small amount in the yogurt. And then I was drinking a lot of Diet Coke. So lots of coffee, lots of Diet Coke, lots of Splenda. So it wasn't, you know, it was not the healthiest diet, but, you know, that's kind of what was preached to me. So flash forward to July of 18, I started training for Bay State, which is a fall marathon in Lowell, Massachusetts. You know, I just started not feeling right. I, I just started feeling very tired all the time. And I, I thought it was like a motivation thing. Um, so, cause it usually does take me about a month from my off season to get in the swing of things when I start training for a marathon. So, um, that was in July of 18. Then in August, you know, it just kept getting worse. Like I could barely run 20 miles. So I was supposed to do, I, tra- when I train for marathons, I do one 20 mile or per week and I would run about 20 miles and then I would just be sick on the couch all day. And my husband kept saying to me, something's not right. And I, I felt like something wasn't right, but I just, 
you know, I thought I was just not very motivated and I thought, you know, it was just mental and something. So I just couldn't put my finger on it. So I was literally taking like two to three aspirin a day to function. So, um, come September, I had to go to Germany for work. And, um, when I got to Germany, it just, my body was just in so much pain. My legs were on fire the whole week. It was like literally pins and needles felt were running through my body. I couldn't go for my runs. And then my body just swelled up entirely. Like I was joking with my friends that Kim Kardashian would be jealous of my butt because it was so swollen. <laughs> it was like just crazy. It was just, I just was like so swollen. And, um, yeah, I ended up sending a picture to my husband and just like joking with him saying I should stop eating the pretzels here because of all the salt. And he, he ended up calling me right away and said, I'm with the nurse right now. And she's saying that you need to get to a hospital. She's, he's like, cause he said, basically like my body looks so swollen that, um, like my heart, could, like it could swell around my heart and it could cause me to suffocate. So I was like, <laughs> I mean, he's like, get to a hospital right now. And he was pretty stern. And I was like, all right, well, it's Thursday night. I'm coming back to, you know, Boston on Friday. I don't, it doesn't make sense for me. I'm in a foreign country. I don't want to go to the hospital. So I ended up going to um, urgent care the next day. So I, I flew home on a Friday night and then I ended up going to urgent care the next day. And when I went to urgent care, the nurse sat me down and she looked over my body and she just looked me in the face and said, I, I think you have cancer. And I just remember she, she, and she was very stern about it. And she said, I, I, you know, and, and, you know, I said, well, do you think it has anything to do with my diet? Like, I really don't, you know, I, I was, be, I've been eating protein powder, protein bars the last two weeks straight because I've been traveling for work. And she's like, no, I, I think you have a mass and it's blocking your, you know, water from going through your body and you need to get to the hospital right away. So I just, you know, I remember like looking at my husband's face and he just, his jaw just dropped and he's, he's more of a poker face than I am. So I remember just, I'll always remember his face like when she said that. So, and I just remember thinking to myself, like, how am I going to tell my family I have cancer? Cause it, it does run in my family and it all of a sudden it just kind of clicked to me like, yes, you haven't been feeling good for like four to five months now and you did nothing about it. So, um, we ended up going to the hospital, um, and basically we got a CAT scan that night. Um, so we were in the hospital for eight hours and I remember like, as soon as we got to the hospital, they're like, Kristen, we've been waiting for you. So, and you know, on the way to the hospital, it was just one of those weird things. Like me and my husband said nothing to each other. It was just the weirdest feeling ever. Um, and I remember saying to him, like, don't tell my family until it's confirmed. Um, but I remember just thinking like, oh gosh, I can't believe this is happening. So it was, it was, a, it was a tough eight hours. So we get to the hospital. Um, they wheel me in right away and they, you know, you still end up having to wait. You know, I remember looking around the whole, the whole, um, waiting room and thinking, gosh, these people look so much worse than I do. This doesn't make sense. Um, but I remember, um, you know, I get wheeled into the, the waiting room or the, the surgery room and, um, or uh, sorry, the waiting room, um, not the waiting room, sorry. The, I get wheeled into the, what's it called? The, my, my room where I'm supposed to wait for the scan and about like six hours passed. And then finally I get my scan. And basically the woman said to me, you know, what was the last time you went to the bathroom? And I was like, Oh, um, it's been about three days. Or I, I, it occurred to me right, right then and there. I'm like, Oh my gosh, you're right. I haven't gone to the bathroom in a few days. She's like, wow. yeah, you just backed up. Yeah. I was like, Oh my gosh. I'm like, so what about the cancer? Did you find anything? And she's like, no, not at all. She's like, why did you think you had cancer? It was good. Me and my husband just like started laughing. We're like, oh my gosh, we can't even believe this. Like we were, I mean, obviously we, we got upset a little bit afterwards because we we're like, how could you tell us I have cancer? But it was just one of those things. I was so relieved. I was like, oh my gosh. So yeah. So I ended up, um, you know, they did a bunch of other tests and they said they just couldn't find what was wrong. So they ended up admitting me into the hospital. Um, and I was there for about five days and what it came down to was, you know, I had severe anemia. Um, one of my doctors said that she's like, that's the lowest I've ever seen. And, um, then I had ed ed edema, which is swelling, but at the other day, they never knew what caused that swelling. And then I had fatty liver and then I had some scarring on my kidney. So, you know, at the end of the five days, they basically said, you know, uh, we're going to recommend that you get iron infusions for the anemia, but for the other stuff, um, we're going to have you go see a nutritionist, but literally you can go home. Uh, you can stay longer. We don't, we don't really don't know what's wrong with you. You could stay longer or you can go home. So I literally called an Uber and said, take me out of here. I'm sick of being in the hospital. So, you know, I was, I was pretty surprised by the anemia too, because at that point I was eating so many veggies. Um, I was eating two veggies, two salads a day. So on top of, 
you know, the, the, what I mentioned earlier, I was eating two large salads a day and I thought I was the healthiest person in the world because I was eating these salads. So, and I literally was eating a bucket of spinach per week and broccoli. And then I was also eating some iron fortified cereal. So I was, I was very much a volume eater. So I thought that was, um, I thought I was healthy. I mean, I thought because I was getting my protein and because I was getting, you know, my carbs and because I was low fat, I thought low fat was the way to go. Um, so I was kind of surprised by the anemia, but, um, you know, that's what I was diagnosed with. So I was told that I couldn't run the Bay State Marathon that year. So I ended up sitting on the sidelines. You know, my health was my priority. So for the next 10 weeks or so, I had to go to the hospital once a week to get these iron infusions to get my iron levels back up. Um, so when I got back home, you know, one of the recommendations that my doctor made was you should really start eating, you know, red meat because it has iron and, you know, the liver as well. So when I got back home, I started Googling diets about the iron and came across keto. You know, I listened to Dr. Eric Berg and Logan Sneed. So I, you know, I made the decision to try keto, which was super scary for me because I feared fats and red meat, but it definitely worked miracles for me. Like I found it made me less anxious and I felt healthier. So, um, you know, I did suffer some of the symptoms in the beginning with the keto flu and stuff, but I ended up loving it. So, so once January came around, so I ended up doing keto from November to December. Um, and then once Boston, once January came around, I started training for the Boston Marathon. So I would do keto for five days. And then on Friday and Saturday before my long runs, I would eat the higher carb foods. And I would just feel so anxious on those two days that I ate the higher carb foods, like really just. I would be fine, you know, Monday through Sunday through Thursday, and then Friday, Saturday, I would carb up and I would definitely feel it. So I didn't love it, but I felt like I needed the carbs as a runner. So I ended up running Boston. And then after Boston uh, from April, June, I went back to keto with no carbs up, felt awesome. And then come October, uh, July, I, I was, I decided to sign up for Lowell again. So that was the marathon that I couldn't run the previous year. And it was going to be like a revenge marathon for me since I was able to run it the year before. And I'd made the decision to do it hundred percent keto. So again, still eating my veggies, um, you know, two, two bowls of salad a, a day, lunch and dinner. And I, I literally was, um, so I would have a bulletproof coffee in the morning, have my lunch, which was veggies and meat on top and some oil and pretty much the same thing for dinner. Um, so I ended up, um, and then on Saturdays before my long run, I would have like a keto brick, which we all know from, Keto Savages company. I would have one of those before my run, or half a one pretty much. Um, and then, um, so I ended up running low and I felt amazing doing 100% keto. Um, you know, I did, I did kind of panic the night before and said, maybe I should eat a dozen bagels or something to get the carbs up. But that, you know, my husband talked me out of it and he, he wanted to make sure I mentioned it that he talked me out of it and I, and I felt great. <laughs> I never felt so awesome before long run or before a marathon. And I just, um, you know, so I ended up running low, ran a great marathon. And then, um, you know, so that was in October. And then, you know, five days before Lowell, I actually did without the veggies. I always, because I would always eat so many veggies, I was always bloated, always had digestion issues. And I just said, before my races, I don't do veggies. And I felt awesome. And I was like, you know, I started recently hearing more about carnivore. Like I follow the strong sisters. I think they're awesome. And I, I, I just love them. And even though I wasn't doing carnivore, I was still following them. And I was just like, I can't, I, I would love to try carnivore, but I can't get rid of my veggies addiction. Since, since I was 15, I was always eating a ton of veggies. So, um, you know, and I, I kind of said something to my husband. I said, Hey, maybe I'm going to try carnivore. And he said, no way. You, you could never do that. You eat, wait, you, you're always having two large salads a day. Like there's no way you can do it. And I said, I'm going to do it. So I kind of dived in in late October. And I was just going to do it for 30 days. I was just going to do it the month of November stop. Um, so, so I ended up, um, I made the decision like late October. I'd got to say like, like October 20th. And then I decided, you know, eat all my veggies that were in the house and then dive right in. So I did that. And then I ended up doing it pretty much through December as well because I felt so awesome. Um, and, you know, I thought I was going to be hungry because I was, I've always been a volume eater, but it, it ended up making me feel so much better. So, so yeah, so I decided that um, I'm going to run Boston Marathon this year, first time as a carnivore keto person. That's so awesome. um Yeah, so literally, you know, I've been doing carnivore for two months now, and I wake up feeling alive, my anxiety's down, my skin feels amazing, I'm just happier, I don't think about food all the time. Um, it made me a better worker. Um, since then, I've, I've decided to focus on like keto companies, so I've been connecting with a lot of keto, keto companies, you know, being a CPA and just... It's been fun for me to do that. Um, 
you know, my iron's back up and really no di- digest- digestion issues as well. So it's been a, it's been a, I wish I discovered this diet 15 years ago. So that's yeah. kind of where I stand now. So yeah, so it's now January 1st. I start training for the marathon in mid January. Very so, cool. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Just talk no, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all that, Kristen. Um, that takes a lot of courage. And, um, I'm just, uh, so many questions come to mind. Um, but one is with, with that health scare you had in the, the anemia and the hospitalization, had you previously had anything like that that had made you think, you know, maybe there's something wrong with this diet or, you know, had you had other health problems or, or any biomarkers that, that looked out of whack or anything like that? or was that really a massive wake up call? Um, so actually I have something to tell you. So prior to me being hospitalized, I actually hadn't gone to the ho- I hadn't gone to the doctors in about five years. <laughs> so funny story, my doctor actually dropped me. I had to call her and beg her and say, please take me back. And she's like, well, I have no openings, but okay. And she's like, well, you haven't been here in five years. I was like, oh, I thought I was the perfect patient. You haven't seen me in five years. That means I must be healthy. Huh. So if I had any warnings, you know, I kind of had, little bouts of tiredness here and there. But, um, so that was the funny thing we could, we, because I hadn't gone to the doctors in five years, I know that's terrible. Now I go every year, I promise. But I, there was no, there was nothing for me to compare it against to. So she's kind of said you could have been, you know, um, declining slowly over the past couple of years and not knowing it. Um, or she said it could have been a rapid decrease. So because, because of that, at not going to the doctors, like I really had nothing to compare it to. Um, so, but I, I you know, I don't know. I, I guess so. I, I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I guess there was no other signs. So for the past couple of years. So I think, you know, the, well, the one thing she said to me was, you'll never know how good you feel until you feel good. Mm. So I think and I and that always resonated with me because it's funny. Every morning I come downstairs and I say to my husband, I feel so awesome. And I'm like, am I being annoying now? Because I say that to you every morning because I because you don't know how good you feel until you feel good. It's just such it's so true. So. I think, um, you know, I, me feeling so great lately, I just. Oh, you cut out there for a second, Kristen. Sorry about that. Yeah. So I, with me feeling so great lately, um, I just don't think I ever recognized any bad symptoms before. Like, so that's kind of. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, and, uh, I'm curious, you know, how has, how has your maybe give to give folks um, some context? What are kind of what is a good marathon time for you? Um, and maybe uh, either through that as a metric or through your you know your practice runs and how you feel during your runs. How has that changed moving from um, you know your low fat high carb diet to um, keto and and now carnivore so far? Yeah. So. Um- you know, as you get older, you do get a little slower. Sure, so I always, so I, I was getting, um, slower up until Boston this year. So I actually did about 335 last year. So I, so in my fastest days, the fastest I've ever run was 308 and that was down a hill in, in St. George, Utah. <laughs> so, but I was doing around 312, 315, 320. So, um, you know, but then about two years ago, I did 325. And then I did 3:30, I believe, and you know, I, I was gradually getting slower two years ago, and, and that was my excuse. So I ran Boston this year doing the partially keto carnivore with, uh, I'm sorry, partially keto with the carb ups. I did 3:15, so that was like much faster than I thought. Wow. And then at Lowell, I did again 3:15, but I felt so much stronger. My husband like said like you were smiling the whole race and you looked really good, and I kind of told him I was holding back a little because I was a little nervous about a bonking at mile 20 so i did 315 again so so i dramatically improved my times doing um doing it using keto so and i, and I just felt greater and i felt stronger so definitely changing my diet has helped my marathon times for sure yeah. that's that's really impressive and um have you changed your training at all to adapt to a more fat-based metabolism or um <laughs> is it fairly similar given that you're running such long distances anyway yeah, so my training has always stayed the same. I will say this past month though, like I have felt stronger. So I, 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 my, my training consists of running between four to five miles, five days a week. When I'm training for, like when I'm training for a marathon. So I, I run four to five miles, five days a week. The sixth day I'll do a 20 mile run. 
And then I'll take a rest day, the seventh day. And then I lift weights every day. And I will say since going carnivore the past two months, like I feel stronger with my weights. I actually was just um, thinking I got to get heavier weights. <laughs> so I definitely feel, you know, because I'm drinking bone broth every day and having a lot of um, meats, bone broth meats and stuff and organs, like I just feel so much stronger. Yeah. So I feel like my, my, you know, I'm, I'm lifting heavier. So it, I'm feeling a lot better. So that's why I'm, I'm pretty excited this year to be training, you know, using carnivore because I feel like I'm going to be a lot stronger. And what has um, really convinced you to, what really convinced you to make the leap in the first place with regards to, to keto? And what has convinced you to evolve into, into carnivore and um, how, how you think that's going to, um, make things better, not only mentally and personally for yourself, but also for your running. So the re I just hear about all the benefits. So, um, you know, when I first went keto, I was watching a lot of Dr. Berg and doc, you know, Lo Logan Sneed's videos and, and yeah. all these great people. And, and I just, you know, I like that people said it would get rid of anxiety. Cause I mean, I kind of have a l little bit of a high stress job and, you know, I just put a lot of pressure on myself to do well. So I think I like the fact to get rid of the anxiety. So I kind of, you know, and, and I, to be honest, like in my past, I had tried low carb before and I thought it, you know, it, it made me feel good. I just didn't stick to it because I like bread. <laughs> but, um, and I always kind of said to mom, as a runner, you need carbs. Like I just, I, that's been ingrained in my head because you talk, even now, like when I tell people I'm a marathoner, I mean, keto marathoner, everyone's like, I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> how, could a, how could a keto person be marathoner? And I'm like, you don't need carbs. And people, like when I tell people you don't need carbs as, you know, you run, it's almost like the fats are cleaner energy. People look at me like I have three heads and I'm like, no, you don't need carbs. Like, and people like, don't run. like people just look at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, no, you don't really need it. So, um, you know, just the anxiety, just the benefits of it that I read about it. I was like, I got to give this a try. I'm always, I, I feel like I'm always willing to try anything once. And if it sticks, then I'll stick with it. If it doesn't, then I'll, you know, what can you lose? So I, I think that when I heard about the, the benefits of it, that really lured me in to keto and then just watching a lot of carnivore people. So the first time I heard about carnivore keto was um, I watched, I think I wasn't able to go to KetoCon this year. I'm going to go um, next year in, in 2020. But in 19, I watched a lot of the videos online. And that was like, I thought people were joking. I thought that people were being like sarcastic saying don't eat veggies and that they're toxic because, you know, you grow up thinking you have to have veggies. I thought it was a, a perfect picture of health because of the amount of veggies I would eat. And, um, you know, so I, I, I was like, that's crazy that for me to think that. So to change my mind of thinking, like I just said, you know, I, I got to give this a shot. And to be honest, you know, I always, after I would eat my veggies, I always felt bloated. I would eat, I would jokingly send pictures of my, of my stomach to my sister in California and say, look, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I mean, literally that I would eat so many veggies. I would be so bloated and, uh, you know, I just didn't feel good. So um, you know, and just, you know, watching, I would say the strong sisters motivated me because they were such high volume veggie eaters as well. Like I literally, I always tell them, I, I message them all the time and say, I'm, I'm your, I'm your triplet <laughs> because I mean, <laughs> I, they were, they, they motivated me because they were, they, they, I kind of followed their way of eating prior to them switching over. And, you know, they, 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 they talk about all their benefits that they're getting. So with me like following them, I, I think that I, I that that motivated me to make the, the the leap. Yeah, they're absolutely awesome. They are, um, and love love following both the strong sisters and, and interacting with them. Yeah. Um, and the keto, keto community is awesome. I, yeah, I really, really great community, absolutely. Yeah. And um, it's great that you've been able to integrate your your work life, your professional life, along with your personal life as you dive into this community. What has that been like for you? Oh, it's been awesome. So I, I, you know, I reach out to companies that are keto or carnivore and just say, you know, I love what you're doing because, you know, I'm a big fan of those companies because, you know, I don't, I, even though me personally, I dived into both fairly quickly and, you know, suffered from it from like, but I think, you know, to go from a standard, you know, low fat diet to, you know, to carnivore keto, like I definitely had a do Oh, I lost you again there, Chris. Oh, sorry. So to go from the standard diet to, you know, to carnivore keto or keto, you know, keto, it's, it's very hard. So I love that these companies are, you know, developing these products to help you, you know, transition. So, I mean, yeah, it's, at the end of the day, it's great to eat whole foods, but I think when I reach out to these companies, you know, I, I can, because I know the space so well, 
because I've tried these products and I've tried their competitors. You know, when I talk to them, they, they can kind of see the passion and the excitement that I get for them when I talk to them and growing their business. And, you know, everyone's been that I've talked to has been very welcoming. And, you know, so I kind of, um, you know, I, we have a big food and beverage practice. I work for um, Markham and we have a big food and beverage practice. So we know that industry and the struggles that they're going to have. But me personally, when I work with keto and carnivore companies, like I know who their competitors are. I know their product. I know, you know, the ingredients and if they're clean or not. So I can kind of talk to them about that stuff. And they, 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 they mentioned that they see the excitement that, you know, when they, as they're growing companies. So it's exciting to work with these companies just because I'm so passionate about that. And I love what they're doing to help people, you know, make healthier decisions. So, you know, I try not to push the keto on people, like my friends and family, like I, I don't push it on them, but I, I get excited when, I, you know, when people get excited about it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That's so I great. actually, I have a brother-in-law who's transitioned to keto and, and I actually, um, he, I actually cook his meals for him weekly. So I, I send him home with like, I do all his meal prep for him and, and we talk about it and I, you know, he tries products that I've tried and, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. And my husband's uh, keto as well. He, and, you know, because of me, <laughs> basically. That's great. So. And, yeah. and I was going to ask about, you know, communities around you and, and either pushback or questions you've, you've received. Um, maybe we could start with like the running community, other people you run with, um, or know who are marathoners. Uh, what do they think of keto? Is it becoming more mainstream with athletes like Zach Bitter? Um, or, or is it still, you know, out in the fringes, the, the main, um, advice is you need higher carbs for things like marathons. Yeah. So in my personal life, none of my friends who run marathons are keto and they think I'm crazy. <laughs> so okay. I, I, you know, like, but it's funny because, you know, I, I don't push on them again. Like, but I, but they see, but they see me and they're like, Oh, it's working for you. But I don't think that, like, I think that they're not motivated. I think a lot of people don't want to give up bread. So I think that they're like, Oh, wow, it's great. It works for you. Like this works for me. So. Um, but I've met a lot of people like on Instagram that are, you know, that are runners that are keto. So, so I, I, it's coming, but in my personal life, not so much, but definitely within the Instagram space, I've met a lot of runners who are keto. So I think, I think, you know, to me, I feel like I'm pretty open and it was scary for me to switch over because you always think you need carbs, you need carbs. So I, I get it. And I, I get it like when people don't understand me. So that's why I try not to push it too much. Yeah, I think that's a great policy. I think just be the example and, you know, people will ask questions is, is always the best philosophy. Um, and exactly. you talked a little bit about your family, but how about in your work life? Do your coworkers know about your diet? What do they think about it? Um, do they think you're crazy? You know, how does that work? <laughs> yeah. So, um, so it's kind of funny. My, my boss who I work with a lot of these food and beverage companies, um, he's actually keeps telling me he wants to go keto and he's like, but um, I told him, I said, you you would need to text me all the time because I feel like you would not know what to do. <laughs> like, I was yeah. like, so if you go to a restaurant, I'm like, what would you get? And he's like, oh, a salad with balsamic vinaigrette. And I'm like, oh, no, the vinaigrette may have sugar in it. So it's one kind of those funny things. Uh, he's like, right. oh, yeah, I'd screwed up. So he, my boss has kind of – he's got fatty liver as well. So I think he kind of uh, wants to try it. Um, um, and then – as far as my other coworkers, you know, again, it's one of those things that, um, well, it's funny because they always, my coworkers just always make fun of me and how much salad I would eat. So when I told them I don't eat salad anymore, cause they were like, Oh, you're not eating salad. Like, and I was eating meat. They were like shocked. I mean, they were just like, Oh my gosh, like that's crazy. Like that's all you used to eat with salad. Like how do you switch it? So I think they were kind of people like to poke fun, but, um, people have been supportive. Um, one of my, um, so I have two Instagrams, one for my normal life and then obviously the keto dot marathoner. And one of my coworkers did find my keto marathoner, um, page. And I was like, Hey, don't tell anyone at work. <laughs> <laughs> and I said that this is between us. And he kind of, he asked about it. He said he, he actually wants to try it too. So, so, um, uh, people have been so supportive. Um, you know, my family uh, has, you know, they're awesome that, but they definitely have their concerns, which, you know, based on my eating disorder history, I get it. Um, but you know, I keep telling them, you know, I feel awesome. I'm happier. Um, you know, my husband has even told him he's like, she's a different person. Like she's just so happy and she feels strong. And cause he used to ask me, he, my husband's very, very supportive of my running and he, every day, how's your run? How's your run? And I, in for, for months back, you know, back in 18, I'd say, I feel awful. I feel awful. And now I'm like, I feel awesome. I'm like, I feel so strong. And he's like, yeah, I just see a difference. Like she just feels great. 
So, um, you know, as long as we keep telling them that, you know, this is, you know, they, they don't like the extreme of it, but I keep saying, you know, you know, it, it is what it is. And it, as long as I feel good, I think, you know, they're, you know, they think that there's no variety, but there is kind of a lot of variety in the diet. Um, if you, cause I do the whole nose to tail, which we can talk about later, but, um, I think that there is a lot of variety and I think that if you feel good, do, do what works for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, some of my coworkers know how I eat actually at most and they think I'm totally crazy, but, uh, you know, they, they talk to me about it, ask me questions about it. And I don't try to push it on anyone, um, especially if, if they are happy with their diet and their health. Um, yeah. but I, I think, you know, it, it's totally fine for, for people to, to know what you're doing and, and, you know, if, if they want help, they'll, they'll come to you. Um, yeah. So maybe let's talk about how you eat on a daily basis, Kristen. You know, what is what does a day of eating look like for you? How do you incorporate things like meal timing, organs, um, supplements around your lifestyle and, and your goals? Yeah. So, um, it, so I basically do kind of what I was doing when I was doing keto before: two meals a day plus um, a bone uh, coffee in the morning. So I recently actually started adding bone broth. So in the morning, I'll wake up, I'll go from, I'll do my run fasted, lift weights in my gym. So I have a gym at my house that we, we built. Um, and then afterwards, I'll drink a coffee with um, cream and salt. And for some reason, I like salt in my coffee now. So I actually don't do any sweeteners anymore. I've learned that if I have sweeteners, I'll crave sweeteners. So I got rid of all the sweeteners, even the stevia and the erythritol and stuff that people say are safe. Um, and I have to credit Judy. Um, nutrition with Judy for that because she just said one time she gave a talk and it was amazing and I was like all right I'm I'm not gonna do it anymore so that was a big that was a big addiction to get rid of um, so I'll do the coffee with the cream and Redmond real salt uh, I'll do bone broth um, so I'll heat up I, I make bone broth like once every two weeks and then I'll heat it up and I'll put um, five grams or ten grams of lemon um, cod liver oil and then I'll add in some butter or ghee and then I'll make like a bone broth latte. And I'm, I'm hoping that I'll eventually get rid of the coffee and just use the bone broth latte as like my hot drink in the morning. And then for lunch, um, if I'm home, I'll have, um, I'll have raw meat, a steak. Um, and then I'll have, you know, some type of maybe sardines with it or no, if I don't have no, um, um, seafood or I'll have like, I kind of like, I, I try to get like some meats, some fats and some organs all in my plate. And then maybe some seafood or not. So as far as meat, I kind of you know, all cut, you know, seafood. I like salmon, sardines, mackerel, herring. And then for organs, I, I make liver and heart jerky. Um, and then for I actually ordered brains. And I'm going to talk about that. Um, yeah. Frankie's free range meat. Um, and I know that sounds hor- like hor- horrifying, but they actually don't taste like anything. Like I tell people they kind of taste like a cross between tofu, like a soft tofu and an egg. So um uh, and then I love tongue. Tongue is amazing. It, it's amazing. And then I love oxtail as well. Um, and then for fat, I'll either do like suet, bone marrow, egg yolks, tallow, butter. So I try to get like, you know, your, your microphone's coming out. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do, for fat, I'll do either suet, bone marrow, egg yolks, tallow, butter, or ghee. And I try to do everything. Um, I know that there's a big, you know, contention in the community, but like grass fed, I, I like the grass fed gas finish. I like the way it makes me feel. Um, I recently bought a quarter cow. So, um, from a local farmer, which I, and she's amazing. She's been so, so nice to me. She's given me like a bunch of organs for free. Um, she, she kind of, she, she was asking me about the diet too. She's like, what are you going to do with all this liver? Give it to your dogs. It was kind of funny. So, um, are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. So, so it's funny because I was like, she's like, what are you gonna do with this heart? Like, she's like, Can you eat this? Like, she was just kind of funny. So, so, so she was very nice. So she gave me a bunch of like liver and tongue and oxtail, oxtail for free and a bunch of suet for free. She's like, oh, I usually just feed this to the dogs. So, um, yeah. So, so I bought a quarter cow. So yeah. So we're pretty much all set for my tax season coming up as far as meats go. Um, and yeah. then recently I actually bought chicken feet for, for bone broth. And I guess they, I guess you can cook them in the air fryer and it's like chicken wings. So I'm, 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 I can't wait to try that. So I, I try to buy local too for my local farmers. So I live in Rehoboth, Mass, which is about 45 minutes from Boston. And there's a lot of farmers here. And a lot of my neighbors have chickens. We had our own chickens, but, um, 
we we actually feed them grains. So I stopped eating our chicken eggs, and I I I really like Vital Farms. Yeah, so that's yeah. great. That's yeah, so, sounds like a very well rounded approach. Yeah, so like so I'll have like kind of like I call it like a, like um pretty much like a platter of different random sorts of food because I try to get all my nutrients in, and you know I'll do the same thing pretty much for dinner, and I really try to rotate my food just so I get a variety. Right. And how about um, around your workouts? Are you supplementing electrolytes at all? How do you manage your electrolytes? How do you think about that? So um, as far as like supplements, so I take glycine. I, I like glycine. Um, and I do have collagen, although it's because I, I have this bucket of vital proteins collagen that I have. And I think once I finish it off, I'm probably not going to buy it again because I drink so much bone broth. Um, but something I do take every day is glutamine. Um, I've taken that for like years and I've, I've just loved it. So I think it's really good. Um, and then Redmond real salts, um, you know, as far as magnesium and potassium, I think I'm getting enough of that in my diet. So I, and, um, once a month I do a float. Are you familiar with float at all? Yeah. 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 I've done it before. Yeah. So I am obsessed with it. So we go once a month and, um, I, I tell you, I run so much better the next day. It's the weirdest thing, but it's a, it's a big, it's for people who don't know, it's like a big Epsom salt bath. It's like, so it's, it, it's so there's, it's this, um, basically it's this like hot tub. So you go and you sit on your back for like about an hour and you float because they put about a ton of Epsom salt in it. So you kind of just float in there for an hour and it's just kind of like uh, a soothing thing. So, so I do that once a month, which helps me get my magnesium in. Um, I, I have magnesium pills, but I really don't take them. I, I, I just feel so good. I, I haven't felt the need to take any supplements. Um, yeah. What is that? Yeah, that makes sense. That's similar to my approach. Um, well, this has been super interesting, Kristen. Maybe you can just talk a little bit about, um, you know, how you work with folks in the keto and carnivore health space with your practice. Um, I'm sure some folks listening may be interested in that. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a CPA. Um, so I work for a firm, Markham, where we do accounting. Um, for, to, for individuals and companies. So, you know, I love meeting anyone. At the end of the day, I always tell people any, anyone needs a tax return. And, um, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're part of the carnivore keto family, I consider you part of my family. So I can try to get you the family rates. But, um, yeah, so I, I just love, um, talking with them. Um, as far as, you know, companies that, um, are keto companies, you know, we can do taxes. We can, you know, the biggest thing with that type of stuff is, you know, sales, like state and local tax issues. So we are an international firm, so we can help you with any, you know, state and local tax issues or any international issues if you decide to go overseas. And, you know, both individually and, and if you have any tax issues yourself, you know, we, we based on the bigness of our firm, we definitely um, can help anyone out. So, yeah, love, love to reach out and talk to anyone who thinks that they may need help with taxes. Very cool. And where can folks find out more about you, whether it's for taxes or just who want to follow along with your story, um, carnivore and, and running and health wise? Yeah. So um, my Instagram handle is keto dot marathoner. Um, and then if you I can possibly give you my email address. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, if you want to message me through keto dot marathoner um, and then you can always email me it's Kristen Markham LLP dot com. Um, you can reach me that way as well. I have a Facebook too, Kristen Barishian. You can reach me there. You're not going to find much. It's more running than anything else in personal stuff than, than the food stuff. Cool. So yeah. Um, great. Well, thanks so much for joining today, Kristen. Um, I think folks will find this super interesting. Um, particularly I've had people reach out about, um, marathons and, and carnivore and endurance athletics and I'll link to all of those things in the show notes at carnivorecast.com. Awesome. And, and it, yeah, anyone can reach out to me because I love talking about this. So appreciate it. And thank you so much, Scott, for having me. I mean, Scott's awesome. You, you've been you you're, you and your carnivore cast has been your podcast. Like I I watch them like I get up in the morning and I watch them from day and night and they've been awesome. So you're you're, you're you. awesome. <laughs> appreciate really it. appreciate that. So thank you. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting the carnivore cast on Patreon by becoming a patron. You'll help us reach more people and continue to create content on Carnivore. There are also exclusive perks available, such as private Q&As, consultations with me, and more. Become a supporter at patreon.com slash carnivorecast. Check the episode description for the link. Thank you, and I'll see you there. 
Thank you for listening to this episode of the Carnivore Cast. If you enjoyed this episode, please review on iTunes. It really helps us out and share it with a friend. What questions would you like answered or who would you like to hear from in the carnivore research community? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at CarnivoreCast or go to CarnivoreCast.com. You can also email me at info at CarnivoreCast.com. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, keep it carnivore.